Sabah Mahsu, an 18 year old young Pakistani woman, was brutally beaten, shot in the head by her father, put in a sack, thrown in the river, and left to die just because she eloped with a man of her choice, of whom her uncles and father strongly disapproved. In fact, the UN has estimated more than 5,000 such murders being committed every single year. So the obvious question that strikes one's mind, what exactly is an honor killing? Honor crimes have been defined as acts of violence, often murder, committed by male family members against the female family members whose actions are perceived to have brought shame and dishonor upon the Sadi family's prestige in society. Often women who are suspected of having relationships before or outside of marriage are at the hands of such violence. These crimes include female genital mutilation, electrocution of body parts, breast ironing, acid attacks, forced marriage, among several other forms of sexual, physical, and psychological abuse. The extreme forms being honor killings. And even though media attention often focuses largely on honor killings in the countries in the Middle East, South Asia, North Africa, and the Muslim majority countries, violence of this nature is certainly not limited to those regions. Honor crimes have been reported not only in the UK and the US, but also in Sweden, France, Germany, Italy, and Turkey. Matthew A. Goldstein, J.D. Arizona, first noted that honor, honor killings were first encouraged in ancient Rome, where male family members who did not take action against female adulterers were actively persecuted. These crimes can be traced back to ancient, to medieval Rome, where um, and the early Jewish law mandated death by stoning for an, for an adulterous wife and her partner. In Britain, for example, the fifth wife of Henry VIII was beheaded based on allegations of adultery. In British literature, Shakespeare's death in Mona was killed over allegations of infidelity, and Romeo and Juliet betrays an ancient family feud over honor. Similar notions can be traced back to Latin American societies. In Brazil and early parts of Latin America, Machismo is often described as a code of honor. In Peru, the laws of Incas permitted husbands to starve their wives to death as a punishment for adultery. And hence, we can clearly see that the notion of honor and shame and their justification for violence is not unique to any particular culture or region. And these crimes have been reflected in several historical events and many works of literature. While women and young girls continue to be predominantly the victims of such crimes, honor killings are on the rise against the LGBTQ plus community, especially gay men. In many patriarchal societies around the globe, a woman's actions are very closely monitored. These venomous pangs of toxic masculinity and male dominance have stabbed many souls and brutally curb their desires, their ambitions, and yet simply their freedom to live, to express, and to take pride in themselves. They are strangled in heavy chains of traditions. Yet the flame flickers with a fervent desire to fulfill their dreams. Deserted and abandoned by their own people, they yearn for love, acknowledgement, and acceptance. In 2015, a Syrian refugee woman, Roxanne M., who had fled to Germany to escape her family, was hunted down by her brothers and father and openly murdered in an allotment garden in the city. You ask why? Well, she was raped by three men. Inhuman, not in the eyes of her culture and family. This heinous practice of murdering a rape victim because she is seen to be unclean and loathful, it shatters every little leap of faith in humanity. 
Recently, another Pakistani social media star, Kandir Baloch, was drugged and choked to death by her father in her sleep. Because she was deemed to have engaged in sexually provocative and immoral activities. How? Well, firstly, she divorced her marriage, arranged by her parents, in the view of the fact that her drunken husband used to beat her every day. She unapologetically expressed her feminist beliefs. She dressed the way she wanted. She wasn't hesitant to mobilize her opinions. And yet, and she even, even planned on remarrying out of her own will. And what does she do? She spat disgust on the family's reputation in society. These societal norms of a woman's conduct, especially in South Asian countries like India and Pakistan, will advocate such inhumane violence as being justifiable or, or executable or a widespread cancer which have to be condemned. And such malicious acts are often disguised as suicides, disappearances, and accidents, and the perpetrators are almost never reported as they are directly or indirectly supported by the fellow villagers and even the local police themselves. This issue, not just spread to feminism, it rips apart the very soul of humanity. India and Pakistan alone have 1,000 cases per year, but as ever, the figures remain unreliable. Although India has taken more assertive legal action, including a death penalty for a large number of people who have committed in the water, these crimes still fail to be well documented. While it's in Pakistan, which bears a brand of international criticism, the culture of impunity still breeds. Although reports may be filed, there is little to no follow up and punishment for the perpetrators, particularly in the rural areas. And what's even more heartbreaking on a humanitarian ground, is that it's often the female relatives that help stage these atrocities, and that too, in public places, as to instill dread in others who might choose this way of life. They say she should be educated, oh, but not too much. They say she should be assertive, she should stand up for herself, but she should never cross her boundaries. They say it's her fault. They say the government is inefficient and male dominant. They say that the laws protecting not to be this in headlines or joke, but they say, 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 and say. But what do they do about it? Shedding a few tears won't stop another day from happening. Every day, the broad headlines of the newspapers will ever be bleeding. Another Saba, another Shamia, another Gandhi, and yet another flower will be plucked off from the face of the earth. So let's educate and let's redefine honor because there is not even the faintest receipt of honor in killing. It's just plain murder. Dishonor is not a young girl who wants to go to school. It's not a young boy who steals a mother's makeup, loves to paint, hates sports, and is constantly reproached with, oh, painting is for girls. What dishonor is, is forcibly marrying your 12 year old daughter to someone twice her age. Honor is not chaining them or containing them within the four walls of the house. Honor is not denying people the opportunities that they deserve just because one perceives them to be different. And honor is definitely not sitting your daughter's throat just because she was seen talking to other men. Honor is dignity. It's a sense of respect and reverence you hold for someone you truly love and care for and cares for you. Honor is integrity. And it's shown through simple acts of kindness. Honor is by being kind to strangers and praying for the best of everyone. So, this, so let's unsubscribe to this whole belief system. And let's promote private traditions. Use what's being misused all along. We could start by mobilizing people, activists around the world, educating them on what the rights of women are under Islam and providing socio-economic opportunities to women. Because it, as Mahatma Gandhi once said in I quote, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Thank you.